five big life lessons I learned in 2023. 2023 was a very interesting year for me, you guys. I had a lot of big lessons, but I'm gonna share with you guys the top five lessons that I learned, okay? The first one is partnership. Number two, parenting. I got a sophomore and a senior right now. Giving back. The next one is about going big isn't the most efficient or the most profit. And then lastly, influence how influence have really changed my life so let's dive in let's talk about the first one last year i had to end a partnership with one of the partner i have i don't have a lot of partners i don't want a lot of partner i have one partner him is paul he do a lot of micro partner with me i have another partner i do a lot of multi-family him is chris and then i have a couple other partners uh really one more partner that does other thing with me i went through about probably almost six or seven months of ending a relationship with a, one of the partners. And during that time, we lost a lot of money. There were a lot of headaches, a lot of frustration. And, but we had to still keep it moving, keep it casual. So I'm gonna tell you, I'm an advocate when you do something big, it's okay to have a partner. But I'm gonna tell you, if you're gonna get a partner, you gotta spend time vetting the person, um, researching the person. Maybe, you know, instead of, Jumping right in bed, dating for a little bit. You gotta find out what their core value is, what their priority is, what they believe in about abundance of money. What are they, how do they handle stuff under pressure? Because you don't really know them until you're under pressure and you're dealing with a lot of money, okay? So for me, it was frustrating during that time. But I'm glad that we end the relationship, we're all cool, everybody goes separate ways. But if you're ever gonna get into business, Okay, don't be in a hurry jumping in bed with somebody, do your research, okay? The next one is, I used to think that the bigger you go, the more money you can make. And I realize now, doing real estate investing, you guys, after 30 plus years, it's not always true. Don't let the, all that social media, or going to seminar and seeing people on stage telling you they do big stuff, right, to make you more money. I'm gonna tell you from experience, I do single family deals with ADU, put in the backyard. I got like 12, 13 of those coming this year. I do multi-family and I do bigger apartment building. And let me tell you, out of all three of those categories, do you know which one I'd rather do the most of? Buying an old house and putting the ADU in the backyard. I'm gonna tell you why. To buy an old house like this single family, you just have to put down 20%. House like this costs 700 grand. That's 140. Do you know what it takes to buy even just a piece of land to build multi-unit, five, 10 unit? A million dollar. Then you need millions of dollars of plans and permits, right? And more down payment than a construction loan. You can buy a house like this for 20% down, 140,000 in Seattle. Then you build a dollar in the backyard and get financing for it, and it's easy. These deal right here in Seattle, we make from top front house and back house, we make over half a million dollars in sweat equity. We can buy a deal and build a dog deal within one year. We can get permits for these in four to five months. So the financing is easier to get. You can buy this, turn this rental, right? In two, three months, put the house back in for rent. You stop paying the negative cash flow. As you're building this, by the time you get done, there's so much equity in the back. And by the time you get done, this three hundred fifty thousand going to cost us. We can rent for thirty five hundred dollars. So you cash flowing like crazy in the back house. But the bottom line is, it's easier, it's quicker, it's safer, it's more efficient. And one of these deals, half a million dollar, is equivalent to five townhouses, baby. Five. The next thing I learned is about giving back. I love to give back. You know, I came from Vietnam with nothing, and Charles Zettler helped my family right, move out of the shelter and live with him and his mom, and he helped our family get up and going. So today, one of the things I wanna do, I wanna give back, like how Charles Zeller helped my family. So that's why I'm a big, big, big advocate to go out there and giving back and helping what I call less fortunate people, because that was what we was, we was when we were coming up. And so about uh, two years ago, I got involved with the Ray Foundation, with this, the, the nonprofit side of the Seattle Sounders. And they came to me and they wanted to start building soccer field around Seattle. And they wanted to do this in conjunction with the World Cup being in Seattle in 2026. And they go to build 26 soccer field. Last year, I made a commitment to actually raise $500,000 to go and help contribute to build 26 soccer field. I didn't realize how hard it is to go raise $500,000. I thought it would be easy because I got a lot of followers, I got a lot of friends. But what was shocking was when I started making phone calls one at a time, 
calling friends. I will call a friend, they're like, oh, I donate you $100. I'm like, okay. Then I call a friend, I'll donate you $500. Then I call a friend, I'll do you know, $1,000, $5,000. I call a friend that says, man, I'm a little tight on money right now, bro. I'm like, what? And by the time I call through hundreds of my friends, hundreds of it, I probably raised about $20,000. And I was so disappointed. And I'm thinking to myself, how am I gonna raise half a million dollars this year and I have a hard time even getting twenty, thirty thousand dollars. And so I remember sitting down with one of my mentors and he says, let's think about this. What can we do outside the box to really raise a lot of money? And I ponder and I ponder and I was like, man, you know what? I have a lot of relationship with a lot of vendors that I do a lot of new construction with. What if I went to a vendor and said, hey, if I went and bought me an old fixer house, okay? Would you guys contribute your time, your material for a discount or for free, and then all the profit when I rehab this house, I would donate it to charity. And they were like, yeah, we'd be down for that. We would love to participate. So what happened was I went to talk to my bank and the bank says, I will fund you the whole project of $700,000 and hundred grand rehab for no interest. And from there, Bender said, I will do it for free. I'll do it for free. And all I had to do for was raise a little bit of money to basically take down the house. It was like five or 10 grand and everything else was donated. And that was probably the easiest thing I ever done in fundraising was to bring together a great partnership because they would rather partner their material and time than write a check. And that was the big aha for me. We ended up raising a million dollars last year. And this year, you guys, we're doing it again. We're building seven brand new townhouses and we got the whole thing funded by the bank, $3 million for free. And all these vendors are doing the same thing again. And this year we're gonna build these summer townhouses out and then we're gonna sell it and we're gonna donate $1 million again to the Seattle Sounder and the Ray Foundation. This is what I realized. You gotta think outside the box if you're ever gonna fundraise. Can't do what the old way is. You gotta think outside the box. The next one is parenting. Ah, as many books as I read about parenting, it don't tell you everything. I heard before when the kid get into their freshman year to the senior year, they're gonna have their own mind. They're gonna have their own way they wanna do things. They ain't trying to listen to the parents. And I thought, you know, I'm motivational thatch. I can motivate my kid, they're gonna listen to me. You know what? <sighs> Wrong. Now, thank God they do listen to me a lot, but they still wanna do their own thing. They're their own manhood now. They wanna do their own thing, they wanna try their own thing. They wanna burn their hand. They wanna make mistakes. But as a parent, what we try to do is, we try to protect them by telling them don't do certain things so they don't get hurt. And you know what? The more we tell them that, the more they want to try it to burn their hand. But they won't tell you, okay, I learned it. So what I had to realize how to do is I had to learn how to zip my mouth and I learned how to learn how to support, 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 and encourage, encourage, and encourage, and encourage. Because the more I tell them don't do something, the more I tell them, why are you uh, not doing your homework early? Or why are you staying out so late? The more they will re actually rebel against you. So I had to learn to do the opposite which is encourage, encourage, encourage. When they don't do it, shut my mouth. No, I was there before and encourage, encourage and support, support. And thank God, you know, Russell, right? He reminded me of me when I was younger, right? He liked to try his own thing. And thank God that, you know, I let him do his thing. And, you know, now, you know, he's getting to be, a, you know, going to college now. And he's more open to actually talking things out when he don't understand something. If I would have done what I was doing before, back when I was younger, my parents used to tell me, God damn it, don't do this. He'd be rebelling against me. Or my kid Hudson learned how to drive. I had to learn how to be patient with the guy. Here's the biggest tip I can give you if you are a parent or you can become a parent. The most important thing is this. Stop telling your kid what to do, especially when they get into high school, okay? You can share, but stop telling them what to do over and over and over. Now, they're gonna have to learn their own lesson, okay? The best thing you can do is encourage, encourage, support, support, and don't make them wrong. Because the more you're gonna make them wrong, the more they wanna repel against you versus wanna be around you. And the last one is influence. I would have never thought today I would be considered a influencer on social media. I mean, that's like the least thing that I would consider myself. I'm a real estate investor. I'm a motivational coach. I'm a real estate coach. But an influencer, I'm still bogging my brain. And it bogged me everywhere I go, right? I think when I came back from Japan. When I was in Japan, everywhere I went, hey, I followed you on TikTok. I followed you on Instagram. Can I take a picture? I mean, everywhere I go, people are like, hey, I know you. And it's almost crazy. Because it's only a few years ago, 
I was not even on social media. All I was doing was selling real estate. And we got on Facebook. And then from Facebook, right, we got on Instagram. And then Instagram, we got on TikTok. And then we got on YouTube. And today, we got millions of people all around the world following me on all these platforms. And what I realized is this, okay? Now I am an influencer. I almost have to own up to it. And I have a big responsibility. Because today, I get young kids that DM me all the time. What do you think about going to college? Some people, they just say, forget college. But I gotta be very smart on answering those questions to people because I can tell them the wrong thing, like don't go to college, right? And then someone can actually not go to college because they listen to me. Um, I can tell someone, right, don't work out. And I know working out could be good for them. I can tell them, go buy this product, go invest in real estate. Whatever I say, people are listening to me now. And I gotta be very, very careful. That's why today when I coach real estate students, I have to make sure that when they sign up to be part of my springboard coaching program, I gotta make sure I really help them analyze the deal and make sure that if it's a good deal, I say yes. If it's not a good deal, I gotta tell them don't buy it, okay? Because today I have a big responsibility because I can say something that can hurt somebody, I can say someone that actually inspires somebody. I can say something that can really help someone grow massively. I can say something that basically can get really just kill someone's whole dream. And I gotta be responsible. Now I understand what Oprah Winfrey is going through and all the big influencers. So today, I am thankful for all you guys following me, okay? And I wanna continue to keep growing and keep making a difference. At the same time, I know with this big platform, I gotta be responsible more than ever. All right, that is a wrap. I hope you guys enjoyed my five biggest life lessons in 2023. I got so many of them, but those are probably the biggest five. So if you guys can relate, if you guys can appreciate it, if you like it, please give me a thumbs up. And if you guys have not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel for me, please. We want to hit a million subscribers this year, right? Until then, we will see y'all soon. Peace.